This video is an overview of what WebSocket is and how it works. I will try to explain the concepts using some simple animations. Also, this is the first part in a series of videos about WebSockets. In the upcoming videos, I will show you how to program a socket server using PHP and connect to it from the client side using JavaScript. Ok, let's begin. We know that HTTP is the protocol that governs the world wide web. However, when it comes to real-time web applications like live feeds, real-time editing, online chatting, games, etc., HTTP has a few limitations. Most importantly, HTTP connections are not persistent. Also, there is no clear way for the server to push new messages to the client. Or in other words, HTTP is a request-response protocol. The server closes the connection after handling each request. So the client has to send new requests every time it wants to retrieve the latest data from the server. That's where the WebSocket protocol comes to the rescue. Initially released in 2008, WebSocket is compatible with HTTP. In contrast to HTTP, WebSocket allows persistent full duplex connection between a server and the client over a single TCP connection. So the server can push messages back to the client as and when new data becomes available. The client need not send any additional request. Since WebSocket is compatible with HTTP, connection starts with an HTTP request. However, the request includes a couple of extra headers. The important ones are the connection upgrade header and the upgrade WebSocket header. If the server understands the WebSocket protocol, then it upgrades the HTTP connection to a persistent WebSocket connection. The server notifies this to the client by sending an HTTP 101 status code, which means switching protocols. From then on, it becomes a full duplex TCP connection adhering to the WebSocket protocol. In the meantime, the server and the client perform a handshake as per the standards specified in the RFC 6455 document. Now let's see how it is implemented on the client side and the server side. Almost all modern browsers support the WebSocket protocol. The URL scheme to connect to the WebSocket server is WS, which is insecure, or WSS, which is secure. However, you cannot simply enter a WS URL into the address bar. That's not how it works. Instead, the client-side application uses the JavaScript WebSocket API to open connections and communicate with a socket server. You can open a new connection by creating a new WebSocket instance and passing the URL of the socket server. JavaScript WebSocket API supports a couple of events which you can use while communicating with the server, such as on open, on message, on error, and on close. In addition to these events, the WebSocket class also gives a property called ready state, whose value indicates the connection status at a particular time whether it's connecting, open, closing, or closed. The socket send method can be used to send data frames to the server. When a user opens the client application on their web browser, for instance a chat application, the browser executes this JavaScript code and makes the connection to the socket server. That's basically how it works on the client side. Next, let's take a look at the server side. An HTTP web server software like Apache or Nginx is not sufficient to handle WebSocket connections, although they can act as a reverse proxy to a socket server. For that, you need to write a socket program and make it listen to incoming connections and respond to them. But how? Almost all mainstream operating systems including Linux, Mac and Windows support a feature called BSD socket interface. It's an API that allows programmers to interact with internet sockets and Unix sockets using their favorite programming languages. From a programmer's point of view, a socket is a combination of an IP address and a port number. In most programming languages, creating a simple socket is just a matter of a few lines of code. For instance, take a look at the PHP socket documentation. You can see a number of socket-related functions like socket create, socket bind, socket write, socket read, and so on. We will see how to use these functions in the next video. Okay, let's recap the important points. 
Most importantly, don't confuse the two terms. WebSocket is just the name for the protocol, while sockets are the actual endpoints in a TCP connection. So, the socket on the client machine connects to a socket on the server during a TCP connection. Also, socket is not a physical device, it's just a software structure identified by an IP address and a port number. Other TCP protocols also use sockets, including HTTP. That can sound a bit confusing, right? But don't worry, just understand that any TCP connection happens between two endpoints and these endpoints are called sockets. WebSocket protocols gives a high-level abstraction over sockets and allows persistent TCP connections between the browser and the server. Also keep in mind that a single machine can have multiple sockets bound to different ports. Some can be connection sockets while others can be listen sockets. A single machine can have both connection and listen sockets. For instance, a socket server machine can also act as a client and connect to other socket servers. Moreover, a single listen socket can handle multiple concurrent connections from clients. In fact, that's how multi-user applications like chatting work. Okay, that was an introduction to WebSocket and Sockets. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.